Thank you for that introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Thanks for coming down here to learn about SirenJack. <clears throat> My name is Balint Sieber. I'm the Director of Vulnerability Research at Bastille. And today I'd like to take you through a bit of a whirlwind tour, as I say, um, about this particular bit of research. I've got some props here on stage that I hope to uh, show you a little bit later in the talk as well. Um, so I'll take you through the, the overview. I'm going to be talking about emergency warning siren systems in general. Uh, the phases of the research, the, the two big phases, they're finding the signal, analyzing the signal, uh, the disclosure process, and suggestions uh, looking into the future. So who has actually heard an emergency warning siren system go off? Can I have a show of hands? Oh, wow. Quite a few people, I guess. They really are everywhere. So as you might know then, the, the purpose is mass notification of the public in the event of uh, serious emergency. Uh, and this is also important where other modes of communication such as mass text or um, emergency warning uh, broadcasts through radio and TV might not work due to infrastructure problems. Tsunami is, is obviously a common one too. You've probably seen the signs around the place. Uh, so those alternatives, you might be familiar with some of them. Unfortunately, there was that incident in Hawaii. You might recognize that screenshot from the press. Um, the emergency alert system is deployed across the US and uses radio and TV. And that's an example of a TV broadcast. So your normal programming would be interrupted and you would see a message on the screen. But sirens and, and horns and the like have been around for a long time. Um, the old ones originally in World War II, the air raid sirens, civil defense sirens. And nowadays we see a variety of mechanical, not so much anymore, they're slowly being supplanted by electronic sirens. Uh, and if you are a siren enthusiast or are thinking of becoming one, then I recommend visiting the Siren Board, the one singular place online where every siren enthusiast goes to talk about the subtleties of every model under the sun. It's, it's quite incredible. There's a subculture for everything, and, and this is where you need to go if you like sirens. Um, so in terms of, of the mass notification space, these are some of the, the big players in this space. Um, you might be familiar with some of those brands. Anybody familiar with any of these, these brands, maybe from, from the media? Um, and I actually live in San Francisco, so who's heard of the Tuesday noon siren test in San Francisco? Yeah, a couple of you. So there's, there's a ritual, and it goes like this at noon every day. And there, there should be some audio coming through, so hopefully you'll hear that. So if you move to the city and you're not aware this is happening, the situation I found myself in, it's quite a surprise. It's quite a shock. You don't quite know what's going on, and then you learn about, about this ritual. And then you have the re reassuring voice. Good. So, how does the journey begin? Well, this is San Francisco, and I found myself living here and riding to work, and I would hear this going off, and also zooming in, I would ride past these sirens, and they have this little distinctive signature on Google Maps, which we'll see more of later, but I was always wondering, well, how did they work? There's a control box, solar panel, horns at the top of the pole, an antenna, and the security researcher in me was wondering, well, it looks like it's radio controlled, I wonder if it is secure. So I took some photos initially to do a bit of recon and figure out if there were any distinguishing features. I looked at one box and then looked at the other box and there was a little sticker on the door there. And so I looked the company up and if you go to their website, this is what it looks like now. It's actually been redesigned in the very recent past. Um, that was a nice high res picture, but way back machine, that, that's how I remember looking at it. And they have spec sheets available online, so I looked at that. Uh, and they have a couple of core models of their product. And some interesting notes that I, I found in, in the spec sheet were th was that it uses conventional VHF and UHF radio for receiving and transmitting FSK, DTMF, or two-tone sequential signals. There's an optional upgrade for digital and trunked radio systems. Um, but 
what caught my eye was that in the communication section it said encrypted FSK, DTMF, or TTS. So I was wondering, well, if it's DTMF, it's probably not going to be encrypted or nor TTS, but maybe FSK, they might have something interesting going on. So remember, this is starting from scratch. I don't know anything about the system, don't have access to the system. This is a, essentially a fancy amateur radio fox hunt. So the first thing is obviously you need to find the signal. You need to, to find where these transmissions are going on. But how do you actually find that? Well, I decided to collect some more public intelligence and also look at the radio spectrum. But of course, this turns into a very long running project because you only get to sample the radio spectrum once a week for a very short window of time. So looking at their spec sheets some more, they have these siren nodes, two models, a central controller that communicates with them. And this can be set up over a simplex radio network where the controller communicates directly or through a repeater, which can bounce the signal through the repeater and give you a larger coverage area. Looking on YouTube, I found this informational video actually on the vendor's website where they, I don't, this might have been a news, um, little uh, news short, uh, and they talk about the system, they interview people at the San Francisco Department of Emergency Management, uh, and there were always, you know, little ch choice uh, frames that I found, so that there's a map of all of the sirens in the city, um, and they actually have a very, uh, short period in the video where a couple of frames they show you inside the box so you get to see and what caught my eye was that there was a Motorola radio in the top left corner. It looked, looked like a sort of standard VHF radio. I wasn't quite sure at that stage what model it was. Um, and I should add too that this was initially two years ago, actually over two years ago now a little bit when I first moved to the city. Um, so doing some more research online, they have these, these controllers that are, would be situated you know, somewhere where the officials can access them in the city. And then the siren nodes in this photo from the vendor's website, there's actually a CM200 radio, comes in two flavors, the VHF and UHF flavors. So that might give a hint as to the frequency range. But my thought there was that since this is critical infrastructure, you'd want to have it secured, you probably want to have a large coverage area. So it would make sense to maybe use the city's existing trunked radio networks, of which there are two. One handy site, if you're interested in looking up licensed frequencies and networks, is radioreference.com. And I had a look at San Francisco, and there were two significant public safety trunk networks. One was Motorola Type 2, Smart Zone, the other one's P25. So I thought, well, they're probably worth looking at too, because they're designed to cover the entire city. Um, and you know they, they might, might be using that. So they give you the various frequencies that are in use, the various channels to look at and what have you. Uh, and if you actually look at where some of these radio towers are located, then um, you know, it becomes apparent that they serve the whole city. So it, it's not an unreasonable thing to guess the signal might be there. The FCC universal licensing system has an online database that you can access and do various queries. Uh, and so I started doing that, just looking around, guessing that the license for whatever frequency was in use is probably licensed to the San Francisco city and county of. Um, but nothing really very interesting turned up. Uh, and I focused on the public safety um, classification there. You can also look at the station class for these sign frequencies. And if you, again, use radio reference, they've got a nice wiki with all this kind of stuff that can give you a hint as to what type of device or uh, that frequency might be assigned to. But the thing you have to keep in the back of your head is this is often inaccurate. So you have to often treat it with a grain of salt because you know, they might have been in a rush with the application or things might have changed and it might not be reflected in the database. There are also emission designators uh, and this can give you a hint of the type of signal being used on this frequency. But again, uh, it's just a hint and it's often wrong. So there's a huge list of them, specifies the bandwidth and the modulation schemes and, and so on.